Okay, guys, welcome to the webinar today. We're going to figure out how to expand the iSCSI volumes and failover configuration. Um, if you've got any questions, if you don't mind, just hold them till the end or type them in the chat window and we'll get to them as we have time or once we get to the end of the presentation here. Um, what we're going to do today is there are six easy steps to do this. <clears throat> as you can see on your screen, we're going to stop auto failover on the primary and the secondary node. We are going to stop and delete the volume replication task on the primary node, disable the replication for the volume that we want to expand, add the additional capacity to the volume, add back the replication task, uh, start it all back up again, and off we go with a new bigger volume. So what we have here on the primary node, as you can see, we're running in failover right here. So we need to stop the service. I'll give that a second here. This will automatically stop the service on the secondary node as well. All right, that stopped. Now what we need to do also is get rid of the task for a replication. And you can see we've got four replication tasks here in the failover. Actually, only two of them are used in the failover, the iSCSI tasks. We don't need to stop all of them, just the one that affects the volume we're going to expand. All right, it stopped. Now we also have to delete it. This will at the same time take care of the reverse replication on the secondary node. All right, now that that's gone, we can go up here to our volume group. And there's two steps to this. The first step is we need to modify and remove the replication functionality on the volume. And at the same time, I need to do that on the secondary node. All right, let's get done on the secondary. Back to the primary node here. All right, now we can expand the volume with the modify again. I'm going to add five gigs to it. And we can add back the replication function at the same time. We do the same thing on the secondary node. By the same amount of space. One thing to remember here on the secondary node, adding volume replication back to the volume will, by default, add it as a source in replication. So we need to change this to destination, since it's the secondary. And there's no need to clear metadata here either. All right, so now we have a destination back on node number one. Check and see it by default is source, and it is. So we can add our task back here for replication. All 
The task is here. The task needs to be started to start failover. Start the task. Okay, and back to the failover configuration. Our new task, we have to add back to the failover configuration and apply that. And start failover. One thing to remember here in this entire process, if you've got virtual machines or initiators that are currently connected to the target on this volume, you will want to disconnect them to do this. And as you can see, it just takes moments to do, so it doesn't take very long. The initiators can reconnect right after failover is started when the virtual IPs come back up again. Both nodes are finished. And if we go back now to see our volume, we've gone from 10 gigs to 15 gigs on LV000. Same thing on secondary node. 15 gigs as well, otherwise replication wouldn't have started and neither would fail over. Basically that is the functionality there in a nutshell. Are there any questions?